Okay, I know what you're thinking. Uh, duh, Tord is evil. Have you not watched the end? But hear me out for a few minutes. So, in case you don't know who the hell Tord is, he's a character from Ed's World. He's the guy with the weird hair horns. You should probably watch Ed's World if you haven't already, so everything makes sense. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Before we tackle if he's evil or not, first we must ask, who is Tord? I mean, we know what he looks like. Red hoodie, white shirt, pompadour-inspired hair, black pants and shoes, but what is he like? There isn't many episodes we can really go off of to get a grasp of his personality. He left considerably early in the show's run, specifically in the beginning of 25 Feet Under the Sea. Well, what if I told you he actually had a pretty solid character before he even left? While he doesn't often have many lines in Ed's world, there are a few defining episodes that give him a character that stands out. Let's start with one of the most obvious traits. Gun. In Zombie Attack- Is it Zombie? Zombie? Whatever. In Zombie Attack 1, Matt gets his arm bitten off by a zombie and Tord, Tom, and Ed run away in fear. While Matt is left to presumably die, the remaining three do their best to gather weapons to defend for themselves. Tord initially chooses a gun, but because of peer pressure from Ed and Tom, he instead chooses a spoon and a fork as his weapon of choice. Here we already see a defining trait, Tord having an affinity for guns. We even see in the very next scene Tord looking at a gun rack in thought, seeming to want one still. In Zombie Attack 2, this is continued with Tord's weapon of choice it's still being the gun when he fights alongside Ed against a horde of zombies. It's carried throughout the series into spares multiple times as well. When all of the clones are at the arcade, two Tord clones pull out a gun when another clone confronts them with a problem. He pulls one out when Ed is having trouble with a shooting game, and he pulls one out when Tom tries to show off his strength with Donkey Punch. This is seen again later when Ed is attacked by a group of clones. One of the clones is shot by a gun that Tord is holding at point blank, and he uses it after to combat the remaining army of clones successfully alongside his friends. In Xanta Clause 1, when Xanta is trying to think of reasons for why the crew are on the naughty list, he points at Tord and says, You participated in a game of paintball using real guns! To which Tord smiles fondly about. While some people think that this event has been retconned with Comic 291 from Ed's World Beyond by making Tord shocked rather than gleeful, I'd argue otherwise. It's far more likely that Tord accidentally used the real gun and initially was shocked when he severely injured another participant. Afterward, he likely didn't care and continued to participate with a real gun. In Fun Dead, there's even a brief glimpse of Tord's shadow holding what's presumed to be a gun. With this, we can conclude that Tord's weapon of choice is preferably anything he can shoot with. Something important to note though, is that in a poster featuring all four, Tord is shown with a knife instead of a gun. He could potentially have a preference for knives as well, but we've only seen it once, so it's hard to tell. Alongside his preference in weapons, he is also shown to have violent tendencies. While this isn't out of the ordinary considering Ed, it's something worth noting. In Breakfast, upon learning that Ed has the last piece of bacon in the house, Tord gets incredibly pissed and hits the bacon out of the window. Ed gets violent after being informed that was the last piece and they both engage in a fight. After getting hit by a large bacon truck, they're put in a hospital. When Tord wakes up and is asked what he wants, he asks for bacon. However, he's informed that once again, Ed has the last piece and one of the final shots is Tord with an incredibly angry expression. Aside from having a shared affinity of bacon with Ed, he's also shown to resort to violence when things go horribly wrong for him. This is reflected in the end part 2 where right before Matt hits the big red button, Tord grabs him and punches him in the face. Something interesting to note though is here he quickly realizes his mistake and promptly tries to correct it, even if it's just to cover up what the button did. He hasn't really shown that kind of restraint previously, even in 25 feet under the seat where upon Tom saying, Good riddance, Tord hits him with the back of his car before departing. It's also important to note that in Moving Targets, his last appearance before leaving, Tord is often shown with a smile when participating in military activities. The only time he's not shown smiling and having fun is the part where the Ed crew recite a parody of the classic, I don't know, but I've been told, or when a military activity ends up not going as expected. With this, we can conclude that Tord has violent tendencies and a weapon preference for guns. In Zombie Nation, Matt gets trapped in a mall by zombies and calls Ed, Tord, and Tom for help. On their way to rescue Matt, they too get cornered by zombies in an old house's bathroom. Here we see one of Tord's defining traits. He's able to stay calm and think of the next logical step to get everyone out of a dire situation. While Tom is the one who comes up with the plan, Tord is what prompted him to think of the plan at all. 
In Zombie Attack 2, he comes to Ed's house as a zombie asking for help to find the Necronomicon. While Matt is also searching for it, he doesn't know that there's three books, but Tord does because he selects the correct book and is able to lift the curse from his corpse. One could argue that he made a lucky guess, but I'm more willing to bet he knew more about the Necronomicon than Matt. In the 2007 Halloween special, when the axe-wielding maniac that looks a lot like Stanley Decker from Zombies Ate My Neighbors is searching for Tord, Tom, and Matt, he almost passes by what seems to be Tord. However, it's shown that this is a clever decoy, as the real Tord is seen in the background sneaking past without being detected. Granted, Stanley isn't shown to be very smart, but clearly the decoy is convincing enough to fool him for a brief period of time before he hears Tom and Tord conversing. It's of note that later on, when trying to hide from Stanley, Tord and Matt hide in the closet. However, Tord pushes Matt out at the last second. This is presumably an act of selfishness, but it's unclear as after Matt kicks Stanley in the crotch, only to fall backwards on stairs and severely injure himself, Tord bangs his head on the closet while annoyed. This could have been implied to be another plan, where his plan was to have Matt distract Stanley so Tord could flee and retrieve a weapon to fight back, but that's just a hypothetical. In Fun Dead, we see a brief glimpse of Tord, Paul, and Patrick fighting against the zombies in the news segment where they're described as vigilantes fighting back. It's important to note that they don't seem to be located anywhere near Astivland during this part at the time, but rather in the city. While the episode mostly focuses on Ed's crew, we sometimes get a sneak peeks of Tord and his team's efforts in the background. In the arcade of Astivland, we see Patrick slumped up against the arcade machine with a red leader symbol, presumably knocked out. The mere presence of the Red Army around Astaflan likely means that they moved focus from the city to the amusement park, presumably because they were able to take care of the situation everywhere else. This is backed up when Ed, Tom, and Matt turn Astaflan into a zombie-themed theme park, and one of its guests say, <laughs> Wow, that was a short apocalypse. Tord shows leader characteristics, and as such, it makes sense on how he ends up as the Red Leader. He's able to take charge and is an unflappable person to rely on. Because I'll be grilled if I don't mention this. In Christmas Special 2005, he and Tom make pornographic films. In The Do That Next Door, he and Ed try to watch Kim and Katya fuck. In Behind the Scenes, he says he really enjoys Sentai and has a 90 gigabyte collection. And in the end, part 2, you can see a poster of a woman surrounded by tentacles in the background of his lap. He's a bit of a sexual deviant. Okay, that's the segment. There's not a whole lot to go off of when it comes to why Tord became the Red Leader, but we do know that he's previously shown the desire to take over the world. Because in the 2005 Christmas special, he's described as taking over a part of Norway and almost continued until he was arrested because of a lack of Ed's presence. People often portray Tord as someone who's incredibly power hungry, uncaring, and an evil mastermind. But I feel like that's a little inaccurate. He's shown to care about Ed Matt and arguably even Tom. In Ruined, when they enter the ruins under the house, Tord had brought a light for the four of them to use. When he partners up with Matt to take an alternate pathway, unlike Ed, he doesn't willingly put Matt in danger. Tord and Tom have a slight rivalry where Tom's at first glad that Ed took him and taunts Tord, but later says, No, next time you take him. After the group reconnects. In Hello Hellhole, it opens up with all four about to watch a movie together. After that, Tord suggests that they all go to hell with a smile on his face and everyone's willing to go. They all leave hell with a smile on their face because they had a good time there together. In the end, part one and most of two, he doesn't treat Ed and Matt horribly and spends a lot of time with them, partaking recreations of past adventures. He's a bit unfair and a bit exclusionary towards Tom, but that's because their relationship is a bit more complicated. And behind the scenes, Tord says he and Tom never really got along until recently, and he looks back and laughs now. Well, that last part about getting along may have been a lie. I feel like if he really did hate Tom, he would have made it clear. Tom certainly did. He had no issue cutting it to Tord's segment and saying, Tord doesn't have a real motivation to lie about him and Tom's relationship. However, that's not to say that Tord doesn't hold any resentment towards Tom. He still does, considering in the end part 2 when he retrieves his giant robot, the first thing he does is try to kill Tom with a fistful of bullets. He shoots a rocket at Tom when the latter calls him SUNSHINE LOLLIPOPS in reference to the song he hates. With the consideration of Tord's history and character traits, I think it would be more accurate to say that he may have joined the Red Army in search of power. He's trigger happy, enjoys being violent, and if moving targets has shown us anything, is that he enjoys doing militaristic things. Some people think that being Red Leader came out of left field, but I feel like this is a pretty natural progression of his character from what we know. Again, he took over a part of Norway as far back as 2005. Obviously, I think his character returning could have been handled a bit better in the end, but from where it stands, I think it's pretty solid. After his robot gets destroyed, there's a moment where Tori looks longingly at the destruction he caused on Ed's house. Considering he used to live with everyone, I don't doubt he's sad about the friendships he's lost after the stunt he pulled. 
Maybe he thought he finally found what he wanted in joining and leading the Red Army, but after facing the destruction he caused upon his own friends, maybe he regrets that. But that's what I think. I could be completely wrong. I'm a sucker for redemption arcs and characters with a lot of depth. What do you think? Comment down below if you want. I'm honestly interested to see what people's thoughts about Tord are. Thanks for watching. I don't plan to upload regularly, but um, you're free to subscribe if you want. I don't care. See ya.